Hey Power Rappers, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. Today we're going to show you how to save money and save time and capacity in Dataverse with virtual connectors. So stay tuned. One of the common questions we get asked in the community is how do I synchronize my SQL Server or SharePoint or whatever your source system is with Dataverse? How do I bring that data over into Dataverse? Well, you have things, of course, like importing and sell spreadsheets and templates and data imports, as well as the most common method is data flows. Data flows allow you to schedule a refresh on a periodic basis. The challenge comes in as if I have that data flow that runs at midnight every time to bring over data, account data or accounting data or whatever you might have, building data into Dataverse, it's stale at 1 a.m., right? So we need another alternative. So what I'm going to show you today is something called virtual connectors. These allow you to create a live link to your accounting system, whether it be in SQL Server, uh, Excel, or in SharePoint. And then whenever I see that data, I am looking at a live view of that SQL Server system. So let's take a look at what this looks like, first of all. What I'm trying to solve is this. I'm in the Admin Center. And in the Admin Center, one of the first things you're going to notice is I'm at 85% of my capacity. So when I say save time and money, a few things I mean here. Virtual connectors are not going to use the space you're seeing on the screen up above me right now. It's only going to store the metadata for your given SQL Server, SharePoint, or uh, Excel spreadsheet. They're going to add more later, but those are the three that we're focused on right now. So at the time of this recording, at least, there were three, and you'll we'll see more as time goes on. So I will not have to store that data physically in my Dataverse database, but the schema and everything I need to make that work will work. So it's going to appear like a regular Dataverse table. And as I insert into it, it will push that insert back to the database. If I delete, same thing also. So let's try this now. So this example we're going to do, you can do with me. So feel free to pause me. I'm going to give you a connection to my SQL Server database, and you'll be able to actually do step by step everything I'm doing. So to start with, I'm going to go over to make.powerapps.com. I picked an environment that I want to go ahead and try this in. So make sure it's an environment that you have access to do Dataverse in. So if you can't create solutions and tables, uh, you want to make sure you're in that environment where you can do that. So after I do that, let me go back to my solutions right here. I've created a little dummy solution here. Again, you can create solutions up top here by hitting New Solution. And I have other videos on how to create solutions in publishers. Make sure you create a publisher also. All right. So once we do that, Matter of fact, let me show you, let me start from, that's right. All right, so once we get into here, you'll see I created a dummy table and it, it literally says delete me. There's nothing inside this table that's really interesting. I haven't created any columns or anything yet to, to really work with. All I've done this table essentially is create a table called delete me with its primary name calling of name. So nothing has really been done, uh, but what I'm gonna show you later is how we can link to this table also. So next, I'm going to go ahead and create another table by going to New up top. And, uh, oops, sorry, let me go back over to All again. And again, I'm in the Solution section at make.powerapps.com, and I'm inside my solution. Again, if you have questions on that, please watch my solution video that will walk you through step-by-step -step how to do that process. But I'm going to hit New, and you'll see a new option that we have up top here. We did just have Table, but now we also have Table from an external data. Now, this has been available for a quite some time now, almost a year, but it was much, much more difficult. As of this week, they've given us extra options to do here, and it makes it infinitely easier to configure and install. This used to be about a, a half hour process to do, and that we're going to do in about five minutes here. So I'm going to select table from an existing data source, from an external data source. And this is a brand new environment. Notice I have no connections or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and create my connection to a SQL Server database first. So I'm going to hit Add Connection. It's going to open up the Dataverse connection panel on the side. And I'm going to point to SQL Server Authentication. The reason why I'm using SQL Server Authentication is I want you to go ahead and be able to play along with me right now. And I'm going to give you my username password. Okay? So uh, my server name is Pragmaticworks 
dot database dot windows dot net. I'll zoom in there a little closer so you can see that. So pragmaticworks dot database dot windows dot net. If you get errors, networking errors, typically because you mistype that. Okay. My database name is demo. My username is demo user. Case does not matter on that one. Again, make sure you scroll down. And the password is demo pw123, and it looks like this. Let me zoom in a little closer here. Okay, that is case sensitive for the password. There's no gateway to configure this time. Gateways we use for on-prem data, and this does work for on-prem data if you want. Just know there'll be a little bit of latency as you go from the cloud to on-prem through Dataverse. Okay, so this is how you'll configure it. You can also point to one of your SQL Server tables if you want as well. Then hit the Create button. And this is a demo database. I typically would rename this, but for the time being, I'm going to keep on going. We can close this tab now. And after we close this tab, hit the refresh button in our previous tab, where then our connection has now been created. All right, so we can select the SQL Server database, click on Next. It's then going to show us all the tables that are available to us in the SQL Server database. And as I scroll down, I have a table called linked class that I'm going to use for this example. Pick any of the tables that you want, but some of these tables here do not allow you to write to them. Okay. So as I select linked class, I'm going to leave that checked here to configure the table. And when I hit next, it's going to ask and read the metadata out. Give me all the metadata out in just a few moments here where I can go through and rename things and put spaces where I want linked space class, for example. Uh, you can see uh, the primary field name is, is here, but we can also go through on display name. And if you wanted to put spaces on these, you can absolutely do that as point and configure it however you wish. Okay. All right. So with that now done, and of course we can go through and, and, uh, and change with the primary name column we're going to show the customer is just like any other Dataverse database. But once we're done, we'll hit the next. Now, a few things to note here. Class ID, that's the primary key in that SQL Server table, and it's an auto number. And you can see it's grayed out here because it recognizes that must be an important column now. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and hit next. It's going to confirm that we. this is what we want to do. It's going to take this SQL Server table and put it in the Dataverse. Again, it's not. I'm going to hit net finish here while, and talk through this while it does its thing here. So this SQL Server table is putting in there. It's not putting the data. It's just putting the metadata for that table inside there. And as part of that, it's going to allow me to do things like inserting, updating, and deleting of the data if I have security rights to do that. When I say if I have security rights, if that demo user account that I just gave you, if it has security rights to do this, then it will, then it will allow me to go ahead and insert update here. From a Dataverse perspective, you either have access to the table or you do not. So things like row-level security and all those things do not work, unfortunately. You either have access or you don't. Another thing to note here is it does work on-prem, but it can be a little bit slower here also. And lastly, if I make changes to the underlying schema at the time of this recording, I have to drop the table and re-add it again. When I say, uh, like say, for example, if I wanted to create a column in that SQL Server table, a brand new column, Dataverse will not be aware of that change. So the way to fix that, drop it, recreate, run the wizard again to recreate it, and then I'm off the races. So it's a, a few of the common questions I get asked about this. All right, now that we come back here after a few seconds, we're seeing our tables being created. We can see some data in that table. We have our class ID, and then we have a few other things inside of here. Now we're ready to actually use this table. I'm going to go to my uh, delete me table here, columns, excuse me, and I'm going to create a, go to columns here, and you don't have to do this if you don't want here, and I'm going to create a new column, and I'm going to call that column class, where I'm going to do a lookup, lookup, and I'm going to point to the table called class, link class. Isn't that cool? So now I have the ability to create lookups to SQL Server data from Dataverse. Pretty snazzy. Not having to synchronize systems, it is a live view of this. So I see people that say like, uh, like for example, I have my student information system that I wanna see my, my students as of right now, and I'm gonna create a table called discipline. And I, those are gonna be the, uh, the incidences I have of those students. All right, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and create an app real quick. So I'm gonna go over to apps, create a brand new app, be a model driven app in my example. And I'll hit new app. I'll call it blah, blah, blah. 
All right, doesn't really matter. And I'll hit create. Okay, so we're gonna point the two tables, delete me and link classes. And as I do that, we'll hit the add page button. Of course, this could be a Canvas app. It could be a pages app, a Power Apps pages app also. All right, so here we go. We have class table, link class. And then I also have the delete me table. All right, and I'm gonna hit the add button. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and publish it. And while we're waiting, notice that we already have our view is now showing the data. Uh, we, can, we can start to rock and roll on this now. So I'm gonna hit the play button as soon as it publishes. And then I'm gonna go back while this is doing its thing, I'm gonna hit the back button and I'm gonna go back to my solution and I wanna tweak a few things. So for example, in the table that we just created here under link classes, there's a form. Now this form may not have all the information that I want inside of it. The view may not have all the information I want inside of it. So I can click on this little main form right here and add what I add the, the dataverse elements I want to that form. So on the left side, I want class topic and that should be good enough. I'll leave class ID out, but maybe I can show class ID and make it read only, for example, if I wanted to see the ID. Probably not required in my case though. So. All right, there we go. I'll publish that. And then now my app will now reflect that. Same thing that could apply also to the view if you wanted to all modify the view. So even though it's a SQL Server table, I have now have an app against that SQL Server table. So when I go back over to here and I'll do a hard refresh to get the latest metadata, there we go. I'll create a new record, there we go. Oh, and let me refresh this one more time. Oh, it's still publishing probably. Oh, this is delete me. All right, that's fine. Let me go over to link classes and I'll hit new. And when I type in my class here, uh, pottery, underwater pottery, the topic could be, I don't know. All right, and when I hit save and close, it's gonna push that record now back to my SQL Server database. So it knows I got a, it assigned an ID in SQL Server, it's a GUID in this case, and there we go, underwater pottery. Also my deletes, my inserts, my updates, all those things all work. So in the background, I'm gonna open up a management studio so we can kind of see what's happening in the background and I'll connect to my SQL Server database. Now, one more piece I wanna make changes on. I also wanna go over here and create a few more columns in my delete me table as well. Oh, let me go ahead and uh, move that over. All right. And I'm gonna show you the SQL Server database while we're talking right now also. And I have to do my two form authentication all right, there we go. And we'll have that open in a few seconds here. Okay, so back in the form here, I'm gonna hit the back button and I'm gonna go over to my tables and my delete me table. So back in my solution now. And oh, I forgot to do my face ID, there we go. And when I go over this form, I'm gonna add that column that we added into the form as well for the delete me. So when I go over here, all right, we see, oh, this is the wrong table, excuse me. I thought I, was, I thought I was in delete me. So let me go back to my tables, go back to delete me, go back to my forms, and pick on my main form. So let's take a look at what this looks like now. All right, here we go. There's my class right there. I'm gonna click on class, and I now have that in here. And I'm gonna get rid of the owner, just move it up top for the time being, and hit publish. Okay, let's also change the view so we can see what the impact of this Dataverse piece is as well. So I'm gonna hit the back button here. I'm gonna go over my view now and do the same thing for view. I'm gonna add the class to my active delete me's uh, table. Okay, so give that a few seconds. And there's my class there. Again, I'm gonna hit the publish button and give that a few seconds to do its thing. Okay. Now that we've got that, I should be able to go back to my, my table here and do a hard refresh. And there we go. And go back to delete me now. I will then create a new record for delete me. There's my class. I'll call this uh, whatever. My class though, underwater pottery is there. I can the magnifying glass and I can see all the other columns here as well. So calculus, for example, when I save and close, we'll see that I can everything that you normally get in Dataverse is there, except for those little pieces around the security pieces that we were having. So as I go back over here, we can see there's calculus. I can click on calculus and jump right to calculus. I can see it's a math class and so on and so on. 
Additionally, as I go back to my link classes again, and let me kind of put the side by side here. So here is, uh, oh, that is not what I want. Let me go back one more time here and connect the right database. Okay, uh, it is pragmaticworks. There we go. And so as I connect to this database one more time, I'm going to go into, let me disconnect from that one. Here we go. And as I go into my demo database that you're seeing right now and go into tables, we should see that link classes table. Let me go ahead and just, just select uh, top 1000 records there. And you'll see that there is my underwater pottery here. So as I go through and make changes like comp 101 and I delete that record, for example, here in Dataverse, it's then going to push that record back here. So I'm expecting comp 101 to be gone when I run this query again and you see it's gone. So all my deletes, all my updates are all working here. Same with my comp 102. I can change its name to comp 102 alpha, for example, save and close, and then it'll push that change back there as well. So this is a pretty revolutionary change when it comes to Dataverse. It makes things so much easier. You will notice there's a little bit of latency, right? Because it has to push that through Dataverse over to my underlying SQL Server database. Now, this is the way you're going to do for SharePoint and SQL Server at time when it's recording. If you wanted to do Excel, there's a few extra steps you have to do, the old style of, of doing it. And other data sources are coming as well. I'll call this just blah, blah, blah. And my topic will be blah. And I'll hit save and close and watch how fast this goes. All right, about, about, about what, 10 seconds or so to push that change back because it is pushing it back to SQL Server. And when I refresh this, I got my alpha and I got my blah, blah, blah right there. So really, really cool change that we can do inside of this. So again, the goal of this is to not have to synchronize stuff ever again. As I do this, those changes get pushed live back to my underlying system without having to go through and, and synchronize them in any way. Only downside is if I were to go to my SQL Server table that you saw back here and make a change, add a column, delete a column, to get that pushed back to Dataverse, at the time it is recording, I have to basically um, uh, unload it, delete it from the environment, and then recreate it using the same wizard. So that's a downside to make sure I make, make you aware of as well. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you're curious about other videos like this, please do subscribe to the Pragmatic Works channel and give us a thumbs up. Uh, we have classes like this as part of our uh, classes that we do all the time. We do hackathons, we do virtual mentoring to get you unstuck. And then we also have about 80 classes in our learning management system that you can take uh, as part of one, one, uh, one subscription. And we also do private classes as well. Thank you again for watching this though, and have a great day. Goodbye.